Good morning, one and all. Now we are going to see about the collection and processing of crude drugs in this presentation. And this is the uh, chapter which is coming under the second unit for both the PharmD students, second year PharmD students, and as well as the fourth semester B Farm students. Okay. So already we have seen about the cultivation of uh, crude rats. Where we have seen what do you mean by cultivation? Its advantages over the cul cultivation, cultivated plants over the wild source. And also we have seen the different methods of propagation with its uh, advantages and disadvantages and how we are going to uh, do the different methods of propagation. And the factors affecting cultivation, we will see in the next presentation. And now we will see after the, once the cultivation is over and how we are going to collect the crude drugs and after collection, how we are going to process the drug. Okay, so this particular thing, the collection and processing plays a very important role in the cultivation of crude drugs for the medicinal purpose. So when you just see the collection of the crude drugs, collection is the most important step which comes after the cultivation of your crude drugs. And whether the drugs are collected from the wild source or from the cultivated plants, the collection depends upon the collector who is nothing but the person who is going to collect the drugs. Either he is a skilled person or the unskilled labor. When you are going to collect the crude drugs, we have to take some points into consideration. That is, we have to collect the drugs when they contain maximum amount of your active constituents. And also we have to uh, look into the exact season where you are going to collect the crude drugs because the season also will influence the amount and nature of the active principles present in the crude drug. The presence of the active constituents may change throughout the year. That is why season is one of the main criteria where you have to take into account during the collection of crude drugs. So for this one example, I'll give you that is a rhubarb, which is a drug containing the anthropinone glycoside used as a laxative. It is a rhizome. It is usually collected in the summer season because in the winter season, there will not be anthropinones present in the rhizome. That is why it has to be uh, collected only in the summer during which the anthranols are also converted into anthropinones during summer. Apart from the season, the age of the plant also should be taken into consideration. Why? Because the total amount of the active constituents or as well as the individual proportion of the active constituent also will vary with the age of the plant. Here you can see the example that is the peppermint plant. When they are collected in the young age, there instead of menthol and menthol, high amount of polygon will be present. Whereas in case of the aged plant, you will have the more amount of menthol and menthol, what we require. And also in case of the datura, the younger plants will not have the highest concentration of the alkaloids. There will be the reduction in the percentage of alkaloids in the younger plants. If it is a well-matured plant, you can find the maximum amount of the alkaloids present in the drug. And next, when you see that is the active constituents are localized in different parts of the plant. So let us see the different parts when it is collected. When you see 
the leaves. That is, if you want to collect the leaves, the leaves should be collected just before the flowering season. Example, your Vasaka, Digitalis, Datura, and all those things. Because that is the time the whole plant is healthy and they contain maximum amount of your active constituents. And the flowers, they should be collected before they expand fully. Example is your cloud and saffron. Yes, when we have seen about the cloud collection, it has to be collected or the biological source, source itself, it tells that it consists of the dried flower buds or unexpanded flowers of cloud. So always the flowers has to be collected before they expand fully. And next, the underground organs like your roots, rhizomes, they have to be collected when the aerial parts of the plant die. And fruits, they should be collected in some cases after full maturity and some cases when they are fully ripe. And usually the barks, they are collected in the spring season because it is this time at which the bark can be easily stripped out from the root. And the barks are collected by using three different techniques. The first one is filling. That is, we can put the horizontal or vertical incisions and the barks can be stripped out from the base of the tree. And next one is uprooting. That is, if you want to collect the bark of the root or the underground parts, in that condition, the pl plant can be uprooted completely from the ground. And then by making vertical and horizontal incisions, the barks can be stripped out. And next one is the coppicing method. That is, when the plant has grown, it is cut at the ground level to get, give out the more lateral branches. And once the lateral branches are, are grown properly, vertical and horizontal incisions are made and the bark is stripped out. And when I told you about the underground parts, the rhizomes and roots, when they have taken, it should be completely removed from the added soil and the earthy material. So it can be shaken. If the soil is loose, it can be shaken to remove the added soil or if the soil is too much sticky with the plants part. So that time it has to be washed well with water and taken for drying. And then the unorganized drugs can be collected from the plants as soon as they oozes out. Example, resins, latex and gums. And sometimes when you're collecting the discoloration of the drugs or the discolored drugs or the drugs which are affected by the insect should be rejected at the time of collection only. And next is harvesting. That is, you have seen the time at which the different parts of the plant should be collected. And next one is how you are going to collect. That is called as your harvesting. This harvesting, it plays a very important role in the cultivation technology. Why? Because the way of harvesting will depend upon the economic aspects, that is the cost-wise uh, requirement and also the pharmacopoeial standards. The harvesting can be done by the skilled workers because they know how to do what to do. So that can be done efficiently by using the skilled workers. And another thing what you have to take it into account is during the harvesting, selectivity. That means the very exact drug or the part of the drug what you want to collect should be selectively collected. Because when you are collecting as such without doing the selections, Apart from the genuine drug, you may also collect the weeds sometimes or the other parts of the drug which is unwanted in that genuineness of the drug. So that is why if at all, if any unwanted things are collected, it has to be rejected at the site of collection itself. 
and for some of the drugs still now only the mechanical means that is the uh, collection by the persons is the only way of harvesting for example if you take tea vinca or senna leaves they are done by the hand picking methods that is only the human beings are used to collect these drugs because with the help of the machines sometimes the harvesting is not that much effective and also you require a skilled laborers in collecting the leaves of digitalis tea vinca and senna so till now there is no replacement in harvesting these leaves than the human beings and the underground drugs like your roots rhizomes tubers they are harvested by the mechanical devices that is called as your diggers or lifters as i already told you the tubers or roots when they are digged out from the ground it should be washed well with water to remove the earthy matter the aerial parts of the plant that is the parts above the ground should be harvested by binders flowers seeds and small fruits they are harvested by using the seed strippers and the flower buds are collected by using the bamboo sticks that is by beating the plant with the bamboo sticks that is the height of the cloud trees are quite high and we have to use the platform ladders through which the persons will climb and they will beat the trees with the bamboo sticks and the flowers which falls on the ground are collected by using or by spreading the pollen sheets and the flowers can be collected and dried and processed and next the cochineal which is an a uh, coloring agent from the animal source that is the insects they are collected from the branches of cacti by brushing and next the seeds are harvested by using long handle forks example agar and the peppermint and spearmint plants are harvested by movers and next if you see the fruits from ambelliferous family fennel coriander caraway they are uprooted and they are dried tied into sheaves and after drying they are thrashed or beaten on the ground the fruits are separated by winnowing and sometimes the reaping machines are used to harvest these plants so that is about the harvesting of fruit drugs and once the drugs are collected it has to be processed before marketing a crude drug it is very much necessary or essential to process in a proper way to preserve it for a longer time and also to acquire better pharmaceutical elegance so this processing of crude drugs involves the different operations or treatments based on the source of the drug as well as the chemical nature of the drug the very first step in processing of crude drugs is drying so what is the drying this is the process in which the removal of sufficient moisture content from the drug why you have to remove the moisture to improve its quality and also to make the drug resistant for the growth of microorganisms you know very well the damp or moist condition is the very highly favorable conditions for the growth of microorganisms so that is why whenever you are storing the crude drug it has to be dried properly and stored and also to uh, improve its quality it should be dried properly and also drying inhibits some of the enzymatic reactions and this drying of the crude drugs also will help in 
pulverizing or grinding the crude drug to make it into a powder form. In some of the drugs, special treatment has to be done uh, before drying, especially in case of cinnamon bark and gentian roots. Fermentation is allowed to take place. That is, once the drug is collected in damp condition itself, it is allowed to stay for some time before drying where the uh, active ingredients will be altered to get its highest quality or quantity. And before drying, slicing or cutting into smaller pieces is done to aid drying or in increase drying process. Example, glycerisa, squill, calumba, etc. And usually the flowers, they are dried in shade to retain their color and also the presence of amount of volatile oil content in the drug. This drying can be done by two ways. One is the natural drying, that is just drying under the sun. And another one is artificial drying. So selection of this uh, type depend upon the nature of the chemical constituent and their stability. First one we will see about the natural drying or sun drying. So natural drying can be done directly under the sun or under the shade. That means by making the shed, in the shed, the drying process can be done. If the natural color of the drug, for example, in case of vegetalis, cloud, senna, and also if the active ingredients are volatile in nature, if you want to retain it, the drying can be done under the shade in sheds. If the contents of the drugs present are stable to the temperature of the sunlight, that can be directly dried in the sunshine. Example, gum acacia, seeds, fruits, etc. And the second type of drying method is your artificial drying. Here you can use the mechanical devices or the machines to dry the drug, maybe like uh, oven, that is the use of tray dryers and vacuum dryers and also the spray dryers. The tray dryers, if you see, the drugs which they do not contain the volatile oils or the drugs which are quite stable to heat or which requires the enzyme deactivation can be dried in the trade dryers. So in this process what happens? The drugs are uniformly distrib distributed on the trays and kept into, inside the machine and the hot air at a desired temperature is circulated through the dryers and this removes the water content present in the drug and facilitates the dry. Example is belladonna root, cinchona bark, tea, raspberry leaves, gums, etc. And next one is vacuum dryers. Here, the vacuum dryer can be used for the drugs which are high, sensitive to high temperatures. That means by creating the vacuum, the temperature can be reduced and drying is facilitated over here. The example is tannic acid and vegetalis leaves. And spray dryer. So in this method, the uh, especially for the animal extracts like proteins, enzymes and all these things it is used. They are exposed to a very high temperature for a flash of second as a droplet so that the uh, drying can be fastened and it, uh, at very short time of exposure to the temperature the drying can be done. And here the substance, uh, the substances used are which are highly thermalabile and they cannot withstand the temperature of vacuum drying can be used here. This is especially used for the highly economically important substance and plant and animal products. Examples are papaya latex, pectin and tannins. That is about the drying process and the next process is garbling. That is in the other ways what you can say is brushing. That is you are 
increasing the elegance of the crude drug by doing some of the operations. So the first thing you have to remove the unwanted, that is foreign organic matter or the sand or a dirt, all these things present in the genin drug can be removed. And these drugs are removed by many of the waste. And sometimes if the presence of these foreign organic matter or extraneous matter is permitted, it will affect the quality of the drug and it will not pass the pharmacopoeial lip limits. That's why you have to take, in, take into account that removal of the sand or dirt or foreign organic matter is as an important criteria. And here how you do the, in uh, some of the examples you can see here, the excess of the stems in the lobelia and stramonium leaves has to be removed and removal of cloud stalks in cloud flowers and rhizome should be separated from the roots, rootlets and stem bases and presence of iron pieces in the castor seeds before crushing of the seeds to express the castor oil and uh, by shifting in case of vinca and senna leaves uh, that is, the other parts can be removed. The pieces of bark should be removed in case of the gums, especially acacia. So that is about the garbling. That is, you are increasing the elegance of the crude drug, what you are collecting. And next, this dressing is over. It has to be subjected to packing. So the packing is one of the important uh, process or the step in the processing of crude drugs. The morphological and chemical nature of the drug and its use and effects of climatic conditions during the transportation and storage should be taken into consideration when you are packing the drugs. That means you have to pack the drug in such a way that the morphological character should not be affected. The chemical nature of the drug should not be affected. And also it should not be affected by the climatic conditions during the transportation and storage. So by taking all these facts into consideration, you have to select the packing material and you have to pack your drugs in such a way. Okay, so here we can see some of the examples how they are packed. Aloes, they are packed in the goat skin, maybe to prevent the uh, chemical changes. And colophony and balsam of tolu, they are packed in kerosene tins to prevent the oxidation. And asafoetida is stored in a well-closed containers to prevent the loss of volatile oil. And next, the fixed oils, example, especially the cod liver oil, the fish oils are very highly sensitive to light. So it should be stored in a light resistant container that is maybe amber colored containers so that the sunlight will not have effect on the oil which is stored inside. And the leaf drugs usually after the proper drying, they are pressed and baled. And in case of some of the drugs, the amount of moisture present is also very, very important. That is why I told you drying is an important process or a criteria in the processing of crude drugs. For example, if you take the drugs like your digitalis or ergot or squill, if the moisture content is more, what are the effects or what are the problems you are going to face. If the moisture content in squill is more, it becomes flexible. In ergot, it becomes susceptible to the microbial growth. In case of digitalis, what happens? The enzyme present in digitalis, that is digiperpuridase, it gets activated and it decomposes the chemical nature of the compounds. So to prevent all these things, the drugs can be stored 
along with the desiccating agents. And polyphony, and when you are doing the packing, you also should take into consideration the form in or the state in which how you are going to store. Usually colophony, it should be packed in big masses, not as a powder, because to prevent the auto oxidation. And cinnamon bark, usually after drying, it uh, attains the shape of a quill. So what happens? The quills are packed one inside the other. The smaller ones are packed inside the bigger ones to prove went to the laws of volatile oil and also to help in transport. And uh, drugs like roots, seeds, they do not have special attention, so they can be packed in the gunny bags. Sometimes the gunny bags are coated with the polythene internally. And in some of the things, the weight of the active ingredients present in the drug also should be taken into consideration, especially the Indian opium. And next, the squill again, it should not be stored in the powdered form. If you store it in powder form, it becomes hygroscopic and forms a rubbery mass. And fixed oil in the ergot, it should be removed before storage by treating with the non-polar solvent. That means the drug should be defatted and then it has to be stored to prevent the rancidity of fixed oil in ergot. And lard, it is a semi-solid lipid. Again, it has to be preserved along with siam benzoin to prevent the rancidity. Rancidity is nothing but the oxidation of the fixed oils and fats. And in some of the cases, the atmospheric oxygen also plays an important role, which will help in fastening the decomposition of the products. So always it should be prevented when you are packing the drugs. So that means the drug should be packed in a well-closed containers by preventing the entry of atmospheric oxygen. So sometimes air in the condition sorry, air in the container may be replaced by an inert gas like nit nitrogen, especially uh, in case of liver oils, shock liver oil, or sometimes the pepin, which is a proteolytic enzyme to prevent the oxidation or denaturation. So that is about the packaging of uh, the crude drugs. And next is the storage of crude drugs. So once the packaging is over, you have to store the drugs in a proper way. When a storage is concerned, it is nothing but again the preservation of crude drugs. For doing the preservation, one should have a sound knowledge in their physical and chemical properties. Then only he can provide a proper storage conditions. Okay. And why you want to preserve the drug properly? It means to maintain the quality. If you want to maintain the quality, you have to preserve properly. And usually the drug should be stored in a well-closed, well-filled containers. And the premises where you are storing the drugs should be waterproof, fireproof, and rodent-proof. So that is why always it is stored in a concrete building, which is fitted with the windows and doors. During the storage, the drugs should not absorb moisture. Already we have seen what is the effect of moisture over the drugs. The first criteria, the drugs become susceptible to the microbial group that is ergot we have seen. And some of the drugs can absorb uh, the moisture up to the extent of 25% and they may increase in their bulk weight. And because of this absorption of water, 
they cause impairment in the quality of the drug and they facilitate the enzyme reactions, especially in case of digitalis and wild cherry bark. And again, in case of gentian and ergot, they increase the mold infestation. And next thing when you are doing, when you are storing the drugs, the radiation due to direct sunlight also will cause destruction of the active constituents. Example is your ergot, cod liver oil and digitalis. And when you are storing the drugs, the form and shape of the drug in which you are storing is also an important. As already I have discussed about you, colophony should be stored in the form of big masses. If stored in the powder form, it gets oxidized and loses its solubility in nonpolar solvents like petroleum ether. And during the storage, the drugs should be protected from different types of insects, nematodes, worms, moles, and mites, and also the rodents. So to prevent this, the drying should be facilitated thoroughly. And on and often, the storage area should be treated with the fumigants. The different types of fumigants you use are methyl bromide, carbon disulfide, and hydrocyanic acid. And some of the drugs will be treated specially to improve their pharmaceutical elegance. That is, the example is liming of ginger and coating of nutmeg. So during the storage, the temperature also plays an important role. Sometimes it triggers the chemical reactions, which leads to the decomposition of chemical constituents. So always the drug should be stored at a low temperature. And some of the costly phytopharmaceuticals and uh, some of the substances, it should be refrigerated. and they should be kept in a well-closed containers. Usually the fruit drugs are stored in an airtight, moisture-proof and light-resistant containers. Usually the type of containers used are tins, cans, or sometimes covered with the metal tins, or the amber-colored glass containers, sometimes the uh, containers which are very highly suitable to store the drugs. Usually wooden boxes and paper bags should not be used for the storage of the fruit drugs as the entry of insects or the uh, oxidation due to light and all these are possible when the drugs are stored in wooden boxes or paper bags. Okay, so that is about the storage of the crude drugs and once the storage is over, the quality should be maintained during the storage. What do you mean by the quality management? The herbal drug manufacturers, they should establish a quality management department. So what does this department will do? That department is responsible for supervision and quality control of the, for the production process. So this quality management should have the adequate staff, adequate premises, instruments and equipments to meet the standard requirements of the quality management. So what the staff or the things they have to do, what are their functions? They have to monitor the scale of production and species identification. They should monitor the environment and hygienic management. And they should also do the test production, test for the production materials, packaging materials of the fruit drugs. They have to develop the training plans and supervise their implementations. And they should manage the original records of the production, packaging and testing, etc. So these are all the functions or the uh, duties of the quality management department in the 
cultivation process that is right from the cultivation till to the storage and distribution of drugs to the market and not only the quality managing after managing all these things documentation is very very important the standard operating procedures for the production as well as the quantity management should be maintained and the detailed records for the entire production of process of each and every crude drug should be maintained if necessary the photographs or images should be attached so where and all this can be done right from the origin of the seeds strains and propagation of the plants the materials productions techniques and the process used and also the maintenance of records during the sowing time or quantity and the area of the medicinal plants cultivation the seedlings and transplantations all these processes can be recorded by the uses of their photos or images or the written record can be maintained and also you have to maintain the record about the fertilizers that is the type of fertilizer used the application schedule quantity usage of fertilizer and also regarding the first pesticides all the details that is the quantity usage and what type of pesticide they are using either it is a microbicide or a herbicide or whatever it is all the details has to be recorded and documented and also the documentation should be made regarding the collection and time of the yield fresh and dry weight of the crude drugs processing and drying methods and the drying loss all those things has to be recorded and documented and also the records should be maintained on the uh, transport and the storage of the medicinal parts of the plants and also the evaluation reports on the quality control of the crude drugs also should be maintained so what kind of evaluation uh, reports can be maintained that is description of the macroscopical characters of the crude drug or suppose if the identification test or quantitative determinations are done the records of these results has to be maintained and apart from that all the records of the production plans their details contracts or agreements etc whatever it is there it has to be filed and properly kept under proper designated person that is nothing but the documentation that is right from the cultivation until to the uh, to the storage of drugs all the things whatever they are doing it has to be recorded if possible along with the photos and images and that record should be maintained under a designated person that is called as your documentation okay so here the discussion about the collection and processing of crude drugs comes to an end clear so the very first part of the cultivation is over and the last part of the cultivation collection processing of crude drugs is uh, covered the factors affecting the cultivation of crude drugs we'll see in the next presentation okay thank you